Greetings. This past week, I had a comment on one of my videos, which doesn't happen all that often on this channel. I wish it did, but that's okay. And it was on a video I made four or five years ago. So it came out of the blue, wasn't expecting it. And it was interesting because I talked about a character named Lucas Davenport from a series of books written by a guy named John Sanford. And that's not his real name. <laughs> Anyway, I had talked about three leadership qualities that he had that made him a great leader. And so this guy decided to share something with me that John Sanford had actually written back in 2011 when he was talking about Lucas Davenport, who, as a fictional character, he has at different times been a police captain, been a police sergeant. He was a detective, a lead detective. He's done a lot of different things. Um, he's also rich, so, <laughs> you know, he, he's a basically a regular guy. I like a lot of police detective novels. I love stuff like that. Anyway, what John Sanford said about him in 2011, when he was talking about leadership is, and I'm going to read this to you because this is what the guy shared with me, at least a little bit of it. And he says, Lucas, on the other hand, was a poor leader. He simply wasn't interested in what he considered the time-wasting elements of operating in a bureaucracy. He was intuitive, harshly judgmental, and would occasionally wander into illegalities in the pursuit of what he saw as justice. In doing that, he preferred to work with one or two close friends who knew how to keep their mouths shut, didn't mind the occasional perjury in a good cause, and knew when to blow him off if he got too manic and started shouting. And they'd shout back. Lucas's cops were outsiders for the most part, the strange cops. Well, here's the thing. The guy also wrote that he didn't even watch the rest of the video, and he didn't really know what I was talking about when I talked about leadership and good leaders or great leaders. And my thought, which I kind of responded back to him, was, well, if you didn't watch the entire video, then how would you have an understanding of what I actually meant? Because, you know... Here's my thing about leadership, and what I'm going to tell you is not going to be different than anything I've said in the other 138 videos on leadership that I've talked about here. Leadership, great leadership, good leadership, even bad leadership, is how you treat employees and the people around you. So, for instance, if I am trying to do the best I can for my employees so that they can produce the best work, so that they have an opportunity to grow within themselves and if they want to be leaders at some other point have the opportunities to prove themselves and it benefits the company or corporation that's good leadership that's the best you could ever hope for and all the other employees who work there who are disenfranchised and I'm gonna use that term for now if you treat all those people right then you're a good leader now, sometimes you may be in a position where you cannot alter what happens in the C-suite or the upper levels, but if you can basically get other people to work with you and be fair with you and you're fair with them, that is the makings of good leadership. Another thing with good leadership is that it can be situational. I've talked about how on September 11th, 2001, there were a lot of people who were not in leadership positions who took the mantle of leadership when it was necessary and did the right thing in helping a lot of people save their lives. So there's that. But here's the other side of leadership. Just because someone is a great leader and exhibits the qualities of great leaders does not necessarily mean they're a nice person 24-7. <laughs> it's just, you know, I have had moments. I've been, you know what, I'm considered a pretty nice guy. It's not me saying that, but I have always tried to be the nice guy. But I do have my limits, and I don't forgive all that well. The reason being is because I read people pretty quickly. And if I let someone kind of in my inner circle, then they're pretty much in my inner circle for life unless they give me a reason not to be. In which case, you know what? Done with those people. I don't forgive. You know, because now they have shown me that I can't trust them. There's no loyalty there. And, you know, I don't trust them because they're not honest. Those are my three main moral principles. That's mine. I can also be a little bit vindictive on people who I knew were dirty if they have lied to me or if they've tried to set me up or if they've tried to go over me 
in a time period where they're just totally in the wrong. For instance, I've told this story in one of the videos, I don't know which one of these, where many years ago I'm working at the hospital and there was this guy who actually worked in the nursing home, he wasn't even working in the hospital, who tried to co-opt certain space that I had for my registration people. Basically saying we're going to put everything here and it's just, just what it's going to be. And I said, no, it ain't going to happen. Just not going to happen. I said, this is supposed to be a confidential area. You can't have everybody in the entire hospital walking in here to do stuff. It, it's just not going to happen. And I sent these people away and he calls me up. <laughs> and in a way, he kind of threatens me. He says, you don't know who you're dealing with. And I didn't respond to that very well. So I was also sick and I walked quickly to the nursing home area and I was getting ready to go in there and basically I was going to physically throttle him or I was going to basically try to threaten him. I was going to dare him to stand up because I was that mad. But I was also sick so I didn't have full control. And I put my hand on the door and I stopped and I stood there for about five minutes thinking about it. Then I went back to the hospital, went up to the C-suite, spoke to the CEO, told him what this guy wanted to do, told him what he said to me. And the CEO said, well, no, you can't put that there. That's supposed to be a confidential area. Thank you, number one. Number two, and he said that to you? Yes, he said that to me. And let me tell you the rest of the story. And I told him how I was walking down there with the intention of kicking his behind and decided not to. He says, well, I'm glad you didn't do that because that would have caused something else. But I will take care of it. And 15 minutes later, this guy calls me and says, Oh, so you ran to Neil, didn't you? I said, you said what you had to say. You're lucky I didn't make it all the way down there. Don't ever bother me again. But that wasn't enough. I had him on my list of people because I figured if he did something like that, that at some point he was going to do something else to somebody, most probably <laughs> to me, but at least to somebody that was not going to be legitimate or legal or honest and I was going to definitely keep my eye on him. And a year later, he did exactly that. And it caused a big scandal in town. And I was the guy who put everything together because a whistleblower came to me because I was a compliance officer. And we shut him down. He was gone the next day. Uh, the city was lucky. They were actually very lucky because they could have been sued for millions of dollars. <laughs> the hospital was lucky, but we acted fast. And that's because I kept my eye on this guy. I just knew there was something. And, you know, it's stuff like that where I will watch someone. If someone kind of does that in a way to me, I will get back at him. Now, I'm not like Lucas Davenport. Remember, this is fiction where if he sees someone who has done a lot of bad things and seems like they're always getting away with it every once in a while, he will go above and beyond and he will take care of those people. He will kill people, but you know, that's what he does. And you know what? Based on the story, when you're reading it, you're saying, you know what? That's a guy who deserved it. <laughs> and you think that. And truthfully, sometimes I think there are people who deserve what they get. Is it going to be me who does it? Well, if I got to go out and kill somebody, no. But if there's something else that happens, and that person has shown a pattern, yes. Now, my owning up to that basically tells you that I'm not a nice guy 24 seven. I can be very nice, most of the time I am. I am great with my employees, or at least I was when I was a, you know, all the time director. As a consultant, I've been great working with other people, but I've had moments where someone has irked me and I have pulled rank. Or I've told them, okay, fine, I'm going to let everybody know what you just said. And that will freak them out. Because nobody goes against what is supposed to be done. You know, when you call in a consultant, you're not bringing a consultant in there so you can tell them how you're going to do things. You're bringing a consultant in so the consultant can figure out how to get things done and make everything better. Otherwise, you just didn't need the consultant. Keep going the way you want to go. You know, <laughs> they brought me in here to investigate this. So there are those times where you just can't always be totally, totally nice. Now, at the end of consulting gigs, I always have given credit to the people who have helped, the people who have shown progress, 
the people who really deserve more kudos than they've probably been given by the employers at the time because I find that happens a lot where employers don't necessarily know just how good some of their people are so there you go so did my protagonist Lucas Davenport was he a great leader he had some great leadership qualities was he the nicest guy all the time no he was a guy that had principles but he would sometimes go above and beyond he would beat somebody up who deserved a beating but as a law enforcement officer he shouldn't have done it but these are the time I mean, you know that's just kind of how it is those books started by the way back in the 80s so even though you know now there's still a book occasionally and he's in his early 50s now um, you can't necessarily get away with doing that kind of thing anymore we will object to cops who go above and beyond and we should but it doesn't mean and this is just my opinion it doesn't mean that sometimes somebody might not have deserved it now does that change what kind of leader I am when I'm leading people no does it change what kind of leader I am when I'm teaching people and I'm looking out for their rights no it just means that every once in a while I have a wild streak I have a mean streak and I'm not alone anyway that's what I got today my name is Mitch Mitchell let me know what you think of something like this do you consider yourself a nice person and are you a nice person 24 7 365 y'all let me know you take care and if you like this kind of thing please subscribe share it with your friends because <laughs> I'm supposed to say that you take care